This is Elliot from EO Nutrition, and in today's video, we will be quickly looking at why someone who is deficient in vitamin B1 or thiamine may have a problem tolerating magnesium supplementation. The reason I'm doing this video is because I have several different clients who I work with who have a history of being unable to tolerate magnesium supplements. The magnesium supplements may induce a feeling as though their nervous system is being ramped up. It might cause insomnia, it might cause anxiety, it might even cause palpitations. Now in these people, I found more often than not that actually the underlying problem was a vitamin B1 or thiamine deficit. And that when we address that, the person was able to tolerate magnesium supplements. So some of the common symptoms that people experience when they take magnesium, and they do not tolerate it. Someone might get headaches, they could get brain fog, they might have trouble sleeping. So I often see people might say that they get insomnia when they take magnesium. Other times they're feeling agitated, restless, or anxious for some reason, and they might be fatigued, and some people actually get muscle pains. Now, they've tried multiple forms, so they've tried amino acid chelates, they've tried magnesium chloride oxide, same thing happens. They try balancing out other minerals. So they try potassium, they try calcium or having more salt. That generally doesn't work. Um, they might try other B vitamins because they've read that magnesium relates to B6 some way. So they'll take B6 and they still can't tolerate magnesium. So the only thing that they can do is to avoid taking magnesium supplements. And so the surprising solution that I found for some of these clients is giving thiamine, giving vitamin B1. And this is what we're going to look at. Thiamine and magnesium have a very tiny relationship. It turns out that how the cells are using thiamine tends to depend on our magnesium status. And that includes the activation of its of, of thiamine to, from its inactive form to its active form, how thiamine is used in energy metabolism, and also how thiamine is participating in the pentose phosphate pathway. So in the pentose phosphate pathway, I've spoken about this in a lot more detail in other videos, but essentially it's how we're using glucose, not to break down for energy, but to build things up or produce other molecules. Now, thiamine is a critical cofactor for an enzyme involved in that pathway. That's called transketolase. Transketolase requires active thiamine as a cofactor to function properly. It's also known that it requires a divalent cation, which is in this case magnesium, to fulfill its functions. So both giving thiamine increases the transketolase enzyme activity, but you also need magnesium to do that as well. It's, it's really important to understand that you need both nutrients for this to function. When we're looking at how we're using thiamine in cells, I've spoken in other videos about how we need to activate it into its active form. So we take thiamine, free thiamine, and we run it through an enzyme, thiamine pyrophosphokinase, and we make thiamine pyrophosphate or thiamine diphosphate. That's essentially when we are attaching two phosphates to thiamine so that it can participate in biochemical reactions. Now, this thiamine pyrophosphokinase enzyme, it needs ATP to work but it also needs a divalent cation. Now, there's a few which have been shown to, to allow pyrophosphokinase to function, um, but the main one is actually magnesium. And finally, in energy metabolism, we see that magnesium has an interesting effect whereby it is increasing the activity of alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is part of the Krebs cycle. You can see that on the right-hand side, um, and this is part of mitochondrial energy metabolism. Now, magnesium has been shown in experiments to increase the activity of this enzyme quite significantly. Um, and as, as long as there is enough active thiamine pyrophosphate, then magnesium will very much stimulate alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. At the same time, magnesium can stimulate an enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase. This is basically an activating uh, switch for pyruvate dehydrogenase. Now, without going into the details, I've spoken about these in my previous videos, but 
in a simple sense, pyruvate dehydrogenase is really important for glucose metabolism and thiamine is a cofactor for that enzyme. Essentially, I just want to highlight how even though magnesium is not technically a cofactor or does not participate directly in the function of these two enzymes for which thiamine is a cofactor, magnesium definitely does have an effect. So it stimulates pyruvate dehydrogenase indirectly and it stimulates alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase directly. If someone takes thiamine and they have poor magnesium status, then the results of the thiamine supplementation are not going to be effective. So this has been studied on several different occasions in the past. There was one study which was looking at the effect of thiamine supplementation at quite a high dose in the context of magnesium deficiency actually had some pretty detrimental effects. First of all, they showed that the liver was less able to retain thiamine, and they theorized that magnesium was important for how the liver, um, liver holds on to thiamine. And what they also found was that the, um, the subjects developed high triglycerides. So there was another study which looked at thiamine supplementation in a group of magnesium deficient and then magnesium sufficient individuals or subjects. What they showed was that thiamine supplementation in the context of a magnesium deficiency actually caused a significant drop in the blood and bone concentration of magnesium. They also showed that thiamine, um, thiamine retention in the nerves, in the liver, and in, in the kidney were lower in magnesium deficiency than they were in the magnesium sufficient group. Um, and basically what, what this demonstrates is this, again, this relationship between thiamine and magnesium. When they supplemented with thiamine, if the group was magnesium sufficient, if they had enough, then there wasn't any problems. But if they supplemented thiamine in a group which was deficient in magnesium, then it actually had some, it produced some issues with how the cells were able to use thiamine, how they were actually able to retain thiamine. The authors concluded in this study that thiamine is necessary to retain magnesium, but at the same time that magnesium is necessary to retain thiamine or to use thiamine. Um, an interesting finding in this study was that thiamine could not restore transketolase activity in the context of magnesium deficiency. One more study looked at thiamine repletion in uh, patients with Korsakoff or Wernicke's encephalopathy, and they showed that they could not resolve the condition with thiamine alone in the people who were low in magnesium. Here again, another study showed the same thing. Thiamine repletion was unable to correct a thiamine deficiency until magnesium status was corrected. So we know that giving thiamine can have a negative effect on magnesium. It was shown to tank magnesium in one of those studies. We know that thiamine can't be used without enough magnesium. Is it the same the other way around? Well, this is something that I generally see. So people who do not tend to tolerate magnesium very well, they feel as though it ramps up their nervous system. I believe that in some of these people, what may be happening is that they are depleting themselves of thiamine through in increasing those thiamine dependent processes and actually running through their stores. So here is a kind of typical situation that I might see. I see someone who cannot tolerate magnesium supplements. They get these strange symptoms when they take them. For some reason, this is often females roughly in their mid to late 40s. Sometimes, I mean, it's all ages, but for some reason, I see clients predominantly in this age range with this kind of reaction to magnesium. Now they might get headache or brain fog. They could get insomnia and other sleep disturbances. They might just feel like their nervous system is ramped up. Now, on several occasions, these individuals have actually developed a tolerance of magnesium simply through the supplementation of thiamine. And I believe that it is because of this close relationship between the two that if someone is low in one, taking the other could actually increase the demand for the one that they're low in and therefore cause problems. So if someone is low in magnesium, giving thiamine can actually potentially make that worse. On the other hand, giving magnesium in someone who is thiamine deficient, I believe, and it seems to be the case, 
that that can actually that can potentially aggravate that thiamine deficiency. So again, if you know someone who is intolerant of magnesium, then it may be the case that they are B1 deficient and that they would benefit from taking B1 uh, alongside the magnesium supplementation. So if you like this video or you found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my page. You can find me on Facebook as EO Nutrition. You can find my website at www.eonutrition.co.uk. Thank you and I will see you next time.